Welcome to the Binge Breakers Podcast. I'm Jacqueline. I am here to teach you how I overcame bulimia and my binge eating disorder and how you can too. Through simple steps of mind management, repairing your relationship with yourself, understanding your habits, and intuitive eating. Disclaimer, this recording is not intended to be utilized as medical advice or a medical diagnosis. If you think you're in need of medical attention or treatment, please seek it immediately. This recording will also contain sensitive subjects such as binging and purging, weight and depression. Please listen at your own discretion and do what you think is best for you. Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast. I hope you guys are doing wonderful. I'm coming off of being sick, so I'm feeling a surge of energy. I'm probably going to overwork as well and then also feel terrible later. (laughs) I don't know. It's when you've been sick for a while, like all of last week, I was just so tired. It was really hard for me to do anything. On top of that, I was coughing constantly. It was just awful. So I'm just excited to get things done this week without feeling terrible and probably get more done because I feel more productive. So yeah, but I do want to say I am I have a cough drop in my mouth right now. So if my voice sounds a little bit weird, I'm still a little bit sick, but I feel much better. But I'm trying to keep my cough at bay so I don't have to have random fits of coughing while I'm doing the episode. Today, I want to talk about three things that are usually the death of progress for many people, not just in recovery. It's confusion, shame, and doubt. Those are things I want to talk about today. And I'm sure you can guess why, but I think you might still find it very helpful and interesting. On the first day of the holiday support week on December 19th, I am doing, I'm giving members a bulimia recovery roadmap, kind of like I did if you're in the program and you've gone through the intuitive eating section. That section has a roadmap to intuitive eating, and that is going to be similar, but more extensive. I'm going to be talking about what phases you go through in recovery, what challenges come up in each one of them, and then how to move past each of those challenges and what to expect. And the reason I'm doing that, and I'm going to drive home on it, it's probably going to be the lengthiest video of Holiday Support Week, and I'm going to give people a PDF, visuals. I'm going to try to do go all out on that one because people tend to when they don't have something like this or just in recovery in general, get confused, start doubting themselves and feel weird when things happen that are actually perfectly normal and then they feel shame about it. And I know this roadmap will really help people with that. So before I continue, if you are interested in that, if you need help in recovery, getting help in any sort of fashion, whether you join my program or whether you seek advice from a therapist or go to treatment or get help from a friend, getting any sort of help And recovery is going to be one of your best tools. Having an objective outside perspective will really help you keep pushing along and keep going even when you feel like giving up. I cannot recommend getting help enough. At times, the the amount of growth that I've made in my life is solely, I mean, it's it's partly because of me because I had to do the work, right? But a lot of it's because I am very adamant about seeking outside sources of help for myself. I regularly invest in coaching. I'm constantly a part of a program that I can just regularly participate and listen into to develop my brain and to make myself better and constantly be pushing myself and looking inward. So I just do that for regular life now. I have no like bulimia that I'm trying to get rid of, but when it comes to bulimia, it's very, very helpful. So if you're doing this on your own, my bulimia breakup program will be an amazing resource for you, especially during holiday support week, because you're going to get a video sent to your phone through a private podcast every single day. And you're going to get videos on how to handle the holiday stresses as well. And you're going to get a roadmap that's going to tell you everything you should be doing or need to be doing. And you can customize it to yourself. So if you are interested in that, please go ahead and go to bingebreakers.com. Just click on bulimia breakup program and then fill out your info. And a few things, someone told me this. One, you can pay through PayPal, which some people are concerned about seeing binge breakers pop up in their credit statements. Paying through PayPal should solve that. So you can pay through that. And then secondly, you're allowed to keep your cameras off the group coaching calls. And I don't, some people do just leave their cameras on, but if you're concerned about privacy, you're worried that people are going to see you, you can keep your cameras off. I don't mandate that like other coaching programs. So please know that. Okay. So here are the three things that I find to be one of the biggest contenders. And I have a bonus thing as well at the end, but it's going to be really obvious, but I just thought I'd throw it in there too. But Here are the three things I find really stumps people in recovery, stalls their progress, and makes them give up, makes them stop recovering, makes them stall their progress. Number one, and probably the biggest one, is confusion. 
The reason being is I see a lot of people, they come to me and they're like, I just don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. There's so much to do. They get overwhelmed by all the amount of choices, all the different places they could start. They don't know what to actually be doing, or they know what they could be doing, but they are confused about where to start because there's so many different dimensions in recovery. There's so many different elements you could start with. There's intuitive eating. There's um, And then within that, there's subcategories like trying to understand your hunger and satiety cues. Should you start with structured eating for now, or should you actually just go full-blown, trust your hunger signals and see what happens? Um, there are many different methods to recovery. Sometimes it's just about addressing behavior. Sometimes there's emotional things. Sometimes it's about negative self-talk. There's just a lot of stuff. And sometimes there's medical things going on, like in terms of maybe you need to get some of your hormones checked out. Maybe you need to address other things. Maybe it's a little bit more complicated and you actually need to have supervision when it comes to refeeding yourself because you might be really underweight or it might just be really dangerous to eat too much too soon. So there's a lot of different things when it comes to recovery that I can see why people will get into confusion. The reason that it's an issue is because it's not so bad that you're confused, but it's what comes from confusion. When you're confused, you just spin in that, right? And you're like, well, I don't know. So until I know, I'm just going to not make a decision whatsoever. And here's something that will be really key. This is this helps me out so much in my business, in my life, and makes me helps me make faster progress with things. Whenever I turn to confusion, I start to lag. I start to not really make much progress in my life. But whenever I just decide to try something, anything, even if it's the wrong decision, even if it doesn't lead me down, and by wrong decision, I mean, even if it doesn't lead me down the path of getting what I want, it maybe leads to the exact opposite or just doesn't lead there. At least I made progress and now I know something because what people want to do when they're in confusion is they want to know what the right choice is to make. They want to know where to start and they think that they'll be able to figure that out before they start. And of course, you can make educated guesses. And when you have someone like me or someone else helping you along the way, they can make recommendations for you. But ultimately, even their recommendations could be wrong. You have to start somewhere. You have to decide to do something, even if it might be the wrong decision later down the road. Even if you make the wrong decision, at least then you've learned what not to do, and then you are closer to what is possibly, potentially, the right answer. And you've made some sort of progress in that direction of figuring out what you want to do. And to help clear up confusion, that's why I'm giving people a roadmap, because I want them to be able to, when they're in that confusion, be able to have multiple choices to pick from, be able to see where they're at and what kind of confusion they're having, and be like, oh, well, based on what this says, then maybe I should pick this first, and then ultimately decide, instead of just spinning in that confusion and not making any progress whatsoever, because they're confused because they don't know. A powerful skill you actually learn in recovery, um, this is a side note, is how to make decisions, because in order to recover, you actually have to make a series of decisions, right? You have to decide to try intuitive eating, or you have to decide to try structured eating and just time your eating out um, every three to four hours and stick to the books and, and make um, a promise to yourself that you were going to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, no matter what, you have to make that decision. You have to make a decision to pause when you are uh, binging and purging or make a decision not to beat yourself up if you binge and purge anyway, right? You have to make a multitude of decisions. You have to decide, right, to try out a different process and try out something else. And that ultimately leads you to recovery, which is extremely helpful. But it's cool because so many people in life don't make decisions, like outside of recovery for a second. So many people, I struggle with this. I've been struggling with this, what's deciding my education for the future. It's like, people are like, oh, I don't know. And I don't know what the best is. So they just put it off and they put it away. And then they never find out because they never decide to try something. So making decisions will be a really powerful tool you learn in recovery that's helpful for recovery and then beyond. Okay, the second thing is shame. And mainly a lot of people feel shame in recovery because they think that whatever they're doing is weird. They think that they're weird because they're bulimic or they're weird because they do this specific thing in bulimia. And I, I tell you, with my years of being a coach, I have heard a lot of things and nothing really shocks me anymore with bulimia. I believe the most shocking or weird thing I heard was when um, this woman told me that she and her husband are bulimic together and they do that as a couple, which I'm sure is a common thing. But anyway, people think that they are 
weird because of what they're doing, or they start, they run into a snag, they run into a challenge in recovery, and then they think, I'm the only one, I'm the weirdo for doing this, this must mean that I don't follow the regular path, and this must mean that everyone else doesn't have this problem, but I do, and therefore I can't recover, and therefore I should feel shame. I should feel terrible about this. And when they feel weird, but they feel shame and they feel kind of that, that, that thought of I'm the only one, then they don't reach out for help and they don't know what to do. They kind of go back to the confusion place. They don't seek help that they need, advice that they need. They don't talk about it. They don't even want to think about it. Sometimes when you're really embarrassed about something or you feel shame about it, you want to put that memory in the far back of your head. And then if it ever comes up, you just bury it down deep. So when people are like that, then they don't get the help that they need and they don't really make the progress that they want to make. And they just kind of stay stuck in that that one snag area, which again is why I'm doing a roadmap where I'm going to be talking about things like rumination. That's a common thing in bulimia that's not talked about that much. And if you don't know what rumination is, you can look it up, but it is a thing, but a lot of people that do it feel awful about it. Or talking about only wanting to do do certain parts of recovery, like still wanting to lose weight, only doing recovery to lose weight, or only trying to stop the binging, but keeping the purging and restriction. No one wants to talk about those feelings. They think it's abnormal. And so they they then are kind of like, oh, well, I'm just, I can't recover. This means that it's not possible for me. So I'm just going to give up here. Um, I might as well just stop. Or people not necessarily wanting to give up binging. They actually like binging a lot. Maybe they have weird feelings around binging. Um, There's that. Other things happen in recovery, like stealing food, like that's a big one, not just from your roommates, stuff like that, housemates, but from actual grocery stores. I've talked with several clients that struggled. They've they've actually stolen things from grocery stores to binge. Um, So there are a lot of things that happen in recovery, and we're going to try to recover as many challenges as possible. Because when you hear those things happening, just like this podcast, even if you're not a group coaching member or anything, just listening to this podcast, so many people have reached out to me saying, thank you. I don't feel so alone. And it feels like there's hope now that I've heard someone else talk about um, your experience that's the exact same as mine. So the more I can shed a light on weirdness that's going on, that's actually not that weird, it's actually common, the more then people can recognize, oh, it's common. Therefore, we don't have to freak out about this. We just need to know what to do when this this thing appears. It's not a me- measure of like, oh my God, I've never seen this before. This is a weird alien. No, it's just a normal process and recover. The more I can normalize these things, the more you can normalize these things in your head, the easier it is not to talk about it or to talk about it and then get the help you need and move forward and find answers instead of stewing in shame because shame just makes you feel terrible right shame just makes you bury things deep and not tell anyone about it and not do anything about it and then the last thing is doubt so people really dive into doubt hard and so the best advice i ever heard which i've said on the podcast before i believe when it comes to self-doubt is to treat self-doubt like a backseat driver. It will never necessarily go away. It may lessen depending on the confidence you build in certain areas. Like I feel very confident in recovery now. I don't feel, maybe it's egotistical, maybe it's a little bit cocky, but I really feel like there's no way I'm going to go back to bulimia. I don't, I'm not worried about that at all. The only time I get a little worried is if I have an urge to purge. And the only thing I'm actually worried about is knowing that if I did purge, then I would definitely probably relapse. So I'm just not going to do that. So I use that healthy fear there, but I I don't have self-doubt about recovery and my standing in that. However, I do have self-doubt on business things, on personal life things, all that sort of stuff. And people keep using self-doubt thinking that it is real, that it is actually something worth listening to, that self-doubt is factual and that all your self-doubts are real and that you should listen to them and pay attention to them. Self-doubt is kind of this thing that's just trying to keep you safe. And it's just trying to tell you it's your overactive um, warning system in your brain that's trying to tell you, oh my God, all these things could happen. And sometimes it's useful. But most of the time, self-doubt is just like a what if scenario. What if the worst things happens? And I really want people in recovery to shift to, well, what if the best possible thing could happen? What if your dreams come true? What if these things happen? But people dive into that self-doubt and they think that, oh my God, because I'm thinking this, this could come true. And then they kind of rear back of from that fear and they stop trying. And then also, I think what's really helpful for your brain, which is again, why I'm giving out this roadmap, is to give people a clear depiction of how it's going to happen. Because that will, uh, having like laid out, here's the phases of recovery, here are the challenges, here's how you overcome it. Giving people a structured process, giving your brain a structured process helps it see how it could be possible. 
possibly for you, right? It doesn't necessarily guarantee recovery. It doesn't guarantee it's going to happen for you, but you can see a route out. Maybe that route is treacherous. There's going to be difficulties. You're not sure if you can handle it, but you know, there's a path, you know, there's something that you can do. And the more evidence you can give your brain for how it's possible, the more likely your brain is going to tone down that doubt a little bit and try to see the practical side and be like, "Mm, maybe this could happen. Maybe we should look into this more. So that's why I'm doing the roadmap. But even if you're not in the program, I'd highly recommend instead of indulging in that self-doubt, and I did say indulging for a reason, instead of kind of just spinning around at it, my parents, my mom um, would always, me and my brother were at home and we were just laying on the couch or something, being lazy on Saturday. She's like, quit wallowing about. I don't know if that's a real word, but don't waller in self-doubt, right? You want to get yourself out of there and then look for, okay, We're spending time in self-doubt, but what about the other end? Let's spend equal amounts of time on the possibility that it could be real for us. And how could it be possible? And even if you don't necessarily believe it's possible for yourself, try to think of other people. Like, think of me. Like, how was it possible for this girl? I'm not special. I'm not this weirdo. not an alien. I'm just this normal person that knows how to use a computer and a mic, right? That's that's what I am. (laughs) Think about what was possible for me. And then think how it might be possible for someone else you've heard in recovery and think of the exact steps they might have taken. And the more you can see it's possible for someone else, the more you can apply it to yourself. Because I guarantee you, I know you think that you're different. I know that you think that you are to some degree. You're not trying to say you're nothing. But I know that you think maybe you're worse off or you're not as good or it's not possible for you. But trust me, if it was possible for me, so possible for other people, it's likely that it's possible for you too. Um, Unless you're like, I'm not Albert Einstein. (laughs) I would agree that he's more of an anomaly, right? There are certain people that are more anomalies, but I don't think I'm one of them. And I don't think you are too. So try to go from that and make your brain see how it's possible. That's another reason why I'm giving the roadmap out because I want people to see clearly how it could be possible, how there's a path. The more you can understand that, the easier it's going to be for you to comprehend how it's possible for you. And then the other reason I think people, the other two reasons, actually, we'll do two bonus reasons. One is that people just don't actually know what to do, which is, again, why it's helpful to get professional help for bulimia recovery or get a book, something informative, anything, looking at that process and then trying it thoroughly before you move on to the next one. People just don't know what to do. So actually telling yourself what to do and having a plan is helpful. And then the other bonus is people just give up on themselves because it's not working. They think that um, they think they run into a challenge or something. They run into it because of all of these reasons. And then ultimately, because of any of these reasons that I mentioned above, then they just stop trying. The only way you can actually fail is if you completely give up on the goal itself. And even then, you can still reignite your motivation and do it again, right? You can try again. Uh, the money motivation email sent out, I money motivation email that I sent out today to my public email list. If you're not on my public email list, all you can do have to do for that is sign up for my free course and then you'll get the free course and then you'll get added also to my email list and you'll get the money motivation emails and podcast announcements. And usually sometimes I send like Wednesday wisdom posts as well. So I try to be pretty frequent with that stuff. And then you'll know about like course sign up and things like that. I'll usually put promotions in there. But the money motivation email that I sent out was about trying again Um, And why you should try again, even if you've failed a thousand times. Because people think that when it doesn't work out from the first time, the second time, the 20th time, that, okay, it's just a lost cause. I should keep on trying. The best advice I ever heard for that was how backwards the logic is that if we keep trying and it's not working, then it must not be possible. This person said, I think it was Brooke Castillo, she said, you're even you're the closest you've ever been because you failed so many times because you so know so many ways how not to do something. What people do is they just keep trying and at some point because they keep failing they make it mean that it's something wrong with them. It's usually not. It's usually something to do with the structure that they're trying, the tools that they're using, the thoughts in their head, the belief systems they have, or the circumstances. Um, And usually those circumstances have to do with like their environment, or maybe they're not getting enough nutrition. Um, Maybe they're just in a really bad time in their life. Like I have one client who's going through hell right now. Her her life is just really rough right now. My God. Um, So 
for her, it was just about survival right now and figuring out how to take care of herself. And of course, she's not really excelling in recovery right now because she's she's all, hand, all hands on deck, right? So with you, I hate when people always just throw in the towel, not because I think they're lazy. I don't think it's about intelligence or laziness. I really just think it's because they feel like they can't do anything else. And I just want you to know that's not true. The only way you can actually fail is if you give up. And if you give up, you can always start again. You can always try again. No one even has to know. It can just be between you and yourself. Okay, that's it for today. Um, hopefully I edit out all of the sniffles that were in this podcast because there was a lot still. It's so frustrating because I feel better, but I am sick for sure. Um, next week is a holiday week for many people. Um, Christmas coming up, Hanukkah, all those things. So I hope whatever you're celebrating, it's a lovely time. I will post a Christmas video uh, soon <laughs> uh, for next Friday so that you guys can have something for the holidays. But if you are really struggling, worried about the holidays, just join the Believe Me Pre Breakup Program. There's going to be a whole series in there um, on the private pod. There's a whole series in the private podcast on how to deal with different aspects of the holidays, no matter what you celebrate. And then also we're going to be going uh, you're going to be getting a series of videos every single day, starting December 19th through the 25th. This is going to give you touches of wisdom and also to give you that roadmap and lots of stuff that's going to help you during recovery. So highly recommend it. And I'm excited. I'm enjoying working on it. I'm spending too much time on it. So yeah. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys later. Never give up on yourself, my friends. Bye.